Hi, everybody. This is Heather Markell with another episode of The Inspired Nomads, where my hope is to inspire those of you in your 40s and 50s, especially to quit your job and travel the world or pursue whatever passion you have. So today with us, I'm very excited. We have two guests, Miles and Karen, the motor roamers, and they're going to share with us life on the road as a pair. So hi, Miles and Karen. Um, tell us a little bit about yourselves and where are you right now? Uh, we are um, easy to start with first. We're in southern Spain at the moment. Um, we tend to hide out here for the winter because it's uh, it's one of the warmest places in, in Europe to be. So uh, we're in a little microclimate down in Denia in Spain. Um, wow. <laughs> Um, so, can you let us know a little bit about the the stability that you had that you left behind for this life of travel? Uh, we had a, we lived in a four bedroom barn conversion on a farm. The the farmer, the landlord, used to let us play with all his tools and his toys, <coughs> and we helped, we helped with milking the cows and doing the TV testing. So. I was I was playing golf three or four times a week, um, so it was a pretty cool lifestyle, uh, and that's pretty much what we left behind. I also had um, a bit of a corporate job still uh, in tow um, when we were on the Isle of Man. Um, I was running my own consultancy, uh, and we just got to a point where life was really stressful. Uh, we were working 13, 14 hour days. And that was really a trigger for us changing our lives. Um, and over the course of six six years, uh, we ended up heading for the good life, or, or so we thought. Um, and I started changing uh, the way I did my work because it was, there was just so much stress to it. And the finances were great, although uh, it comes at a price. Um, and we paid that price, which is really what, what made us change our lives. So why not stick it out, you know, because like you had those, the great life, you had all the money. I know there's some stress, but, but what caused you to decide this is it? I'd rather do something to make me happy than stick it out another however many years were left. Well, I think we realized that there was something missing. Uh, I retrained. I, I became a children's uh, meditation teacher. I did voluntary work down with the donkey sanctuary. Um, and, you know, everything on the outside looked absolutely fantastic. Uh, although we went to New Zealand for uh, six weeks for our 25th wedding anniversary in 2015. And we had six weeks there in a motorhome, traveling around. And, and Miles said, you know, how are you finding all of this? And I said, you know, what? I love it. I love the transientness of, of the whole experience and the moving on. Um, and when we came back from that trip, I think it was at that point that we realized it was travel that was missing in our lives. Um, and, and from that moment on, life changed. Wow. Well, that's, that's amazing. So, so you said, I think you've been on the road for four years. So as you look back to the life that you used to have and the one you have now, do you regret leaving the stability that you had? Uh, Let me think about that. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> you want to think some more? Or <laughs> uh, no. We're still with each other, actually, because it's really important when when you're living on the road and you're in such a small space, and it's seven and a half meters long, our van. Um, so it's really important that we we keep checking in with each other about how we're feeling and and you know, are we done with travel? Do we want to keep going? And at no point in time have we, we ever regretted uh, the decisions that we made. And, and actually, it was only meant to be for a gap year. Uh, that's, how, well, that's how he sold it to me anyway. Um, yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll just leave, leave the UK yeah. just for a year. We had some property to sell on the Isle of Man. Um, so let's just go traveling for a year. We'll, we'll pack up our jobs. We'll pack up the house, put it all in storage. It'll just be for really a year, love, he said. Yeah. Um, and here we are four years on. So no regrets. <laughs> and you're still <laughs> <laughs> and you're 
and you're still happy traveling together. That's good. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, we've just been we've just passed our thirtieth wedding anniversary, so we're doing okay. Wow! Congratulations. That's wonderful. I know. We, we don't look old enough, do we? Yeah, yeah, you just. <laughs> You were just about to say that, weren't you? Yeah. <laughs> That's beautiful. Uh, you guys have such a good rapport. Like I just met you, but <laughs> I feel like we should have be having like drinks while we're doing this. <laughs> so, um, while you're you gave up the life, you don't regret it. It was supposed to be one year. Now it's been four. Um, how are you sustaining this lifestyle um, without those big jobs? We we live off uh, real estate rental income that we have in the UK. Great. So it's part of an investment portfolio that we've set up 10 years previously, slowly. Uh, and that is now sustaining our life now from this point forward. So that's, that's how we do it. That's, that's Miles's bit. And then, then my bit, it's, it's not quite as, um, as structured as, as the way uh, Miles has set things up for us. Although I'm a life coach as well, so uh, I've got a little bit of life coaching I do. I've written some books, so I get royalties twice a year from those. And, and whilst it doesn't sustain us, it does give us some income that just keeps the salary going. Yeah, that's great. Um, I, I'm, I do coaching as well, and these are the. This is what I love to inspire people listening to know that there's just so many ways that you can sustain this lifestyle. Um, I heard real estate, the, the coaching business. There's also like odd jobs here and there. I'm now getting paid to do writing. So there's just so many different ways to, um, to sustain it. But usually, and usually I think one thing we have to let go of is in the corporate world, it's like there's one big job. It drives us mad, but all the money comes from there. And I think in this lifestyle, it's more likely that we're doing a bunch of smaller things, um, possibly full-time, part-time, possibly project-based. So we're, you know, this month we're doing this thing, next month we'll do that. So it is, it is something to get our heads around, I think, when we take this on, that, that money comes in a different way than it used to. Yeah, oh, absolutely. I mean, we, we started doing, um, well, from the day we left, we did some blogging, um, and we've just constantly been trying to evolve the, the blog. Um, and it's starting to earn us some money. So, like you, I write articles for uh, motorhome magazines in the UK. So that gives us a little bit of income, um, and you know, through affiliate uh, marketing as well. So you're right. There's so many different angles that money can come from. It doesn't have to be uh, this this notion that there's a very neat job for for each one of us. So. Talking about money, you know, one thing that, of course, everyone worries about is, oh, if I kind of take off mid-career, what the heck is going to happen to my retirement? You know, how am I going to make money? How am I going to make make it there? What is your perspective on retirement at this point? We're not going to retire. We're just going to keep <laughs> on going. Um, we do have a, uh, a stocks and shares portfolio, which we leave. That just grows on its own and hopefully that will be enough for retirement so we don't have a pension um but it was 2010 when we had the corporate burnout and, and we said we have to change otherwise it's going to kill us so we, we set about clearing all our debts down and introducing this investment portfolio that will just run and run and run so we're sort of covered from both angles really so yeah, retirement, we're sort of semi-retired now, probably working harder than we did in the corporate world. That's life. Yeah. Uh, but we enjoy yeah. it. We enjoy it. So that's, that's the difference. Yeah. yeah. No, that's beautiful. And I also think, I mean, I don't know how you're finding it, but I also find, and I think it's, it's astonishing to people, but my life traveling around the world is, is incredibly cheaper at least i mean for me from new york and probably you from the uk it's incredibly cheaper to travel the world than it was to have a fixed life in new york do you find the same thing oh totally i i think uh, we often do the comparison if we just 
thought about the rent that we used to pay on our, our lovely barn conversion. That was £44 a day. So what's that in dollars? It's $60 a day? Yeah. Just on rent. Yeah. Um, and we, we love wild camping. So we have, from a rental point of view with, with our, our camper van, we have, we suddenly saved $60 a day before anything else. So absolutely, it's, it's astonishing how much money um, you save living on the road. And if you then think about doing things like house sitting, which we've done before, then whilst you're, you're not spending money, necessarily earning money, you are saving money. So yeah, it's, it's amazing. We've probably cut our bills by two thirds. Yeah, that's, I, it's so fascinating to me and all of everyone that I'm talking to has the same experience. So I think we get, it, it really to me is proof that, of how we get hooked into this corporate life that allows us to have an expensive life and hey, there's a lot of great things about that expensive life. But in the end, it turns out you don't actually need to live expensively to live happier. <laughs> For instance, we, I, we were paying a hundred pounds a month on Sky Television. <laughs> Four hundred channels of rubbish. <laughs> One thousand two hundred pounds a year on television. Come on. Yeah. There's a big world out there. Yeah. Go and explore it. <laughs> it's, and it's so funny, I, I, my cable bill was less than that, but uh, but yeah, like traveling, I hardly watch TV and I don't really miss it. And now that I'm briefly back in the States, when I try to turn the TV on, it's weird. I can't, I just can't watch it. I'm like doing other things and I just quickly turn it off. I don't know. Do you, do you watch TV while you travel at all? We have, um, we buy DVD box sets. So we'll watch, um, series from the states from the uk so we put out all the commercials no commercials yeah. so we, there's no aerial on the roof so there's no direct tv but we have a tv on the wall so yeah just so where moving on to like sort of traveling things you, you're in spain over the past four years where else have you been oh my god uh 23 countries i think we've clocked up uh, in four years. So we've been uh, as far west as Portugal, uh, as far north as Norway, uh, we've been down to Crete uh, in Greece, and as far east as Romania and Bulgaria, and everywhere in between. So we've, oh, we've just seen some amazing things. We, we do feel incredibly fortunate to see the things that we have. Wow. And looking ahead are you any plans to go any specific places yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah yeah well we we've got some big dreams that um i think are, are going to take us quite quite a lot out of our comfort zone so we'd love to do is it anchorage like anchorage i think um canada or alaska alaska oh All wow the way down to uh, south america and we'd love to do the silk route that takes take us from Venice in Italy over to um, to Japan. Although they're they're so big, yeah. You know, not that we haven't got the sort of vehicle today that we could do those trips in. Although I think there's there's a bit of preparation we need to uh, almost at an emotional level so that we make sure that fear isn't isn't getting in our way. So part of our preparation for that is uh, in February we're off to Morocco for uh, a month, which is a completely different experience for us. Um, and then uh, in the summer we'll be heading over to Turkey. Again, a, a very different European experience uh, that's got much more of a um, sort of an overland uh, travel experience rather than the safety net of, of Western Europe. So. Yeah, pushing the boundaries this year. Wow. And as you go to each place, what are the parts of each culture that you like to take with you when you leave? That's a hard question. That is a hard question. question. I'm making you think. <laughs> hey, it's later there. It's only like nine in the morning here. You guys have had time to have a coffee. <laughs> Maybe a beer. <laughs> yeah. I think for, for me, the culture I take. Um, the scenery is lovely. 
Uh, I'm a photographer, so I, I love anything that's scenically beautiful. Although I, I think being able to see how other people live their lives, um, I think life life in, in the Matrix and you know, the famous film can be very two-dimensional. Mm. When you travel, life suddenly becomes very three-dimensional. What are you looking like that for? <laughs> keep going, keep going. It sounds good. Hey, yeah. So I think I've, I've learned about uh, diversity. I've learned to appreciate how people live their lives uniquely uh, and different to mine. Uh, so it's made me a lot less uh, judgmental. Um, so I don't think there's anything specific I could say about each individual culture, just collectively, just that ability to, to see things through other people's eyes um, have been enlightening. It's great. Miles, anything you like taking? Yeah, I think for me it's all about humour. So it's it's road signs that don't make sense <laughs> and crazy things that people do. <laughs> like the cow takes precedence on a tarmac asphalt road. As they should. Yeah. As they yeah. should, yeah. <laughs> With big Arctic trucks going past and you just think, how does this all work? You know? So I think that's what I look for when I go through this. Have you noticed, uh, so I love cows, by the way, like huge fan. Um, have you noticed that in each country, the, especially in Europe, the cow uh, warning sign that they're gonna, there's a cow crossing, the cows look different on the signs in every country. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, crazy stuff. Like somebody's actually, right, somebody's actually taken the time to like dra draft out a cow for each country separately rather than just having a generic cow. I think that's beautiful. It is. And the one in Spain is just the most hilarious looking cross between a donkey and a cow. And yeah, <laughs> it's, it's bizarre. You're absolutely right. It looks I keep meaning to take a picture of all the cow signs in in like each country and I and I haven't but um, I will say that Easter Island impressed me the most because cows actually roam the island freely they don't really like they do belong to people but they just kind of hang out and there's no dairy industry so I, it's it's kind of crazy <laughs> so what are um, one or two sort of life lessons that this journey has taught you that are your favorite? Certainly for me, um, I mean, I think from, from a coaching perspective, um, life is always about the inner journey, not just the miles that we cover. Um, so I personally, I've grown so much. Uh, I was a, a very much a rooted girl. So when Miles first said to me, let's go traveling for a year, my first thought was, well, what if we get sick? What about my house? Where will we live? What if it goes wrong? Um, so I think for me to, to realize that actually I don't need um, a house to be whole, that I can be whole wherever I am in the world. And when people say, you know, where's home? Well, it's right here where we are. And, and that feels lovely that I don't need four walls and, um, and bricks and mortar. To, to have an identity that, that I, I can be me wherever I am in the world. And that actually, I think Miles um, said it earlier, that we just don't need stuff. I mean, my wardrobe is full of clothes and shoes and handbags. Don't you don't need stuff. Yes, yeah, correct. Stuff. <laughs> and, and our lives are just so much simpler than, than they ever were. I don't want things, I don't need things. Everything we have and everything we own is, is pretty much in seven and a half meters of van. And that simplicity has been enlightening. Uh, and it's, it's the basis of a lot of the coaching work around happiness that I do. Is we attach happiness to things and to people and events. And you don't need to do that because they don't bring you happiness or only short term. Um, so that's that's my biggie. Get rid of stuff. Get rid of stuff. Yeah. Get rid of your stuff. Turn yeah. it into cash. Get your debts to zero. Yeah. You'll be a yeah. lot happier <laughs> in the end. Yeah. Really. It's it's really funny that every person I've talked to about traveling is has come away with that too. The the you know you don't need stuff and and I mean here we are 
with stuff and then we go traveling without the stuff and we're all really happy. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so, and I was wondering recently if, if the very act of trying to have a fixed life sort of requires and necessitates stuff. And I don't know if it's partly buying into this, you know, consumerist mentality, or if it's just the act of, I'm fixed, so I need to have a good kitchen cooking set and dishes, and I, I don't know what it is, but uh, it's kind of interesting. I think there's a, there's a lot about how we're conditioned. It, it's, uh, marketeers um, condition us to believe that we need the latest phone or the next car or uh, in order to feel whole that we must have what our neighbors have so you know whilst there isn't a blame it's just an awareness that that actually society conditions us to believe that that we need those things and we prove as many of our fellow travelers have that actually you don't need those things it's, it's just the way you get very true um as you're, so we talked about like a lesson being about the stuff. Was there any, was it that lesson or any other lesson that you've learned that has surprised you along the way? Um, my biggest surprise, I think, is in myself that, that I can do it, that I can, I can be away from, from the, the fixed postcode um, and, and, and be okay, uh, that my, my confidence has, has just increased in terms of even speaking languages. I used to be so nervous when my parents used to live in France uh, speaking speaking French. I used to make Miles come to the end of a, a, a toilet and wait for me in case anyone spoke French to me. Um, whereas now, you know, I've got Google Translate and I'll go to Romania and ask if we can have our brake pads changed. And so the thing that surprised me most is is about my confidence and my love to travel. When, when I thought I was a rooted girl. So that's mine. I think it's true. I don't know, it came naturally. My, my parents moved me around from school to school as a mm. kid. Um, I, they threw me in a German school and I couldn't speak German apart from yes and no. And you just float. You just you adapt and you get on with it. So moving around and moving to different countries every few months was sort of natural to me because I was doing it all through my childhood. Um, in terms of surprises, I'm, I'm surprised that we're still loving it after four years. Yeah. And still going. Yeah. Probably. And on that note, because it's been four years for you, it's been two years for me, is there is there anything at this moment that makes you think, yeah, you know, maybe I'm tired of this, maybe I don't want to do it anymore? Alan, no. For me, we have it's all, it was all about the, the speed. We have done so many miles, and sometimes you just got to put the handbrake on and enjoy the view. And I have hit the travel wall on two or three occasions where I've just said, if I never see another church or cathedral or another ravine, <laughs> you know, you get to you do twelve month travel and you get to the Grand Canyon and it's just a hole in the ground because you've just seen so much. Um, but then you have a break for two or three weeks and you, you root down in, in the French village or wherever you are and then you get the bug again and you just want to turn on the engine and get going. So, um, And that's where we're at at the minute, isn't it? Because we've, we've been, uh, we don't generally tend to do campsites, so we're at one now and this is month two and it, that's really unusual for us, the one being a campsite and two be here for so long and it's been lovely, although we're both getting a bit wanderlusty and itchy feet now, so we're, we're ready. We're ready to move on soon. Yeah, I found that it's it's essential when you are traveling over a long period that you at some point camp out and stay somewhere. If you're traveling every few days, every couple of weeks, that you kind of camp out for a couple of weeks, even a month somewhere, just to breathe and then and then when you recalibrate all of a sudden it's like okay i'm ready <laughs> wander less back so yeah so how do you traveling as a couple how do you how is that for you and how do you manage you know being in the same space in a small space a lot and work together have a card system 
<laughs> like soccer, you can get in someone's space, like the kitchen. The kitchen is for one person only. You get a yellow wow. card. Get out of the kitchen. We have two work zones. Stick with it. Uh, stick with it. <laughs> we have two work zones. This is one, and one is in the in the back area. So um, uh, that's your role. Uh, two offices. Yeah. yeah. Um, but mostly you want to be in hot countries, and we can spend a lot of time outdoors anyway. So. Um, and actually, you know, communication is really important. He's got the funny side, straight side. Uh, we communicate a lot. We have to. Um, you know, we check in with each other about how we're feeling, have we hit travel wall, if we have what we do about it. Um, so that that really helps us. Um, and you know, we're, we're pretty normal, we have blowouts. And it, it's tricky because there's nowhere to go and stomp off to. Um, so it, it forces you to deal with your, your issues. Um, although I think that above anything, we're both introverts. Um, and lots of people are really surprised by that. Although uh, the the energy that it takes for us to be in a large group of people, uh, it does take a toll on us. So the fact we're both that way means that we can be in each other's space. We don't need to talk all the time. We don't need to feel surprised. Um, and it works. And and he's really funny. So he keeps me sane. <laughs> he is very funny. <laughs> Put it this way, in four years I've not had to sleep under the stars, <laughs> if you get my drift. So, we, we must be doing something right. <laughs> wow! <laughs> oh, it's the best one I've heard yet, my god. <laughs> well done, congratulations. Um, so, thinking about the people that might be listening to this video or, or podcast, do you have any tips on, um, you know, someone that might be, maybe they want to take the plunge and um, live this lifestyle, but they're a little hesitant, like any, any tips for them to go do it? Yeah, just do it. What, what's the worst that can happen? Yeah. If you don't like it, you go back to your old job or yeah. a new job but in the same situation, but at least give it a try because we're a long time dead, and if you don't try, you don't want to get to 65 and think, I wish I'd, maybe I should have done that. Um, it's, it's better to try and fail than not to try at all, is, is a phrase we have in the UK. Maybe it's the same in the States. Um, but, you know, after a few months, if it's not working out for you, just go back. No big deal. Yeah. But do it. Do it. If, 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 it's, a, if it's an idea that you've got and you think, yeah, I might like it, just do it. And actually, Miles, Miles would also, I think you said it earlier, didn't you? Um, if, if this sort of lifestyle feels really appealing, then, then work hard to get your debts to zero. Because um, whilst you can downsize, and as we said earlier, it's much cheaper to live this way, if you've still got debts hanging around on credit cards or, or big loans, then they do eat into it into your nomadic life. There's no doubt about it. So if you can get your debts to zero, declutter, streamline everything, and once you've streamlined it, do it again by fifty percent, um, and and that way you'll be much more ready for for a life road. I love it. I'll finish that. If it's an RV lifestyle that you want. Yeah. That every campsite in the world is full of retired people doing the same thing, and they are bored. They want something to do. Both of them retired plumbers, electricians, mechanics. Uh, if you've got a problem, just open your bonnet, and there'll be someone there instantly saying, "What's the problem? Can I help?" We're that friendly, you know. So great. If you break down, there'll be someone around. Especially with all the Facebook groups and forums, just. Put, a, put your problem on Facebook and someone will come back with, oh yeah, you're in that town, go and see Carlos down the road, he'll sort you out. It's, it's that interconnected now, it's just brilliant. Wow, that's, that's actually lovely. <laughs> that's good to know. So any other um, comments or tips to share before we close? Travel is one of the most enriching things you can possibly do. 
So however long you can do it for, however far you can travel, whichever mode of transport you can find, just travel. And it's hard work, so make it simple. Yeah, yeah. Keep, keep it simple. Mm. Um, don't, don't make it too hard as best you can, yeah. um, and we'll, we'll enjoy it. Really well. That's a great point. And by hard work, I'm assuming, I know on my end, I'm constantly planning and figuring out logistics. And is that the kind of hard work you mean? Or in your case, what do you mean? I think it's, it's more, um, we, we do have the phrase, hiring is, uh, traveling is hard work. It's, it's tiring. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we, we can be on the road for four hours a day, and then you're looking for somewhere to spend overnight. You might be alert to what's happening around you while you stay. Um, we we need to make sure that things are secured down in the van, that that our bikes aren't going to get stolen. Um, yeah. And so you're you're always you're on the go, not necessarily physically, mentally, and emotionally as well. So it, from that point of view, it can be hard work. Um, it's it's tiring so be mindful of that that's no reason not to do it it's just be mindful of it so make your life as simple and as noise free as possible so that you can relish every minute and I, I think when you say that you just reminded me also why travel is also one of the reasons travel is so great you're actually using your brain like instead of being slumped over at a desk and doing mindless work your mind is engaged all the time and while some of that engagement might be for tiring reasons. It's still, I think that's probably why I feel so much more supercharged traveling than I ever did sitting at a desk. When, and so I appreciate the hard work myself, but. Yeah. yeah. Although I think if you haven't done much traveling to, to know that, you know, it is, it is beautiful and tiring. Uh, understanding that yin and yang is really, really important. Um, although again, it, it, it's one of the most enriching things that, that we've ever done, for sure. Totally agree. <laughs> um, well, Karen and Miles, thank you so much for being on the show. And for those listening, if someone might want to get in touch with you or learn more about you, how would they do that? Uh, well, we've got a, a website, which is nothroaming.com. And uh, we also have quite a, a big community over on Facebook, which is facebook.com. Um, uh, forward slash motor roaming um, and we're on all the other social platforms as, as well although uh, the website and uh, I guess our, our Facebook page are probably the, the main the main two. perfect um, well again thank you for being here and for anyone who has watched this episode which has been super fun <laughs> um, thank you for your time today and as always this has been another episode of the inspired nomads and you can learn more about us on either our Facebook, uh, so we have Facebook channel um, at The Inspired Nomads. We're on YouTube, The Inspired Nomads. And you can learn more about me and the work and travel I do at www.heatherbegins.com. And as always, please feel free to send any questions or any feedback you'd like about the show to me at Heather at heathermarkell.com. And as always, I will look forward to having you see us or hear us on the next episode of The Inspired Nomads. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.